It was just a year ago, almost to the day, that I published a video about the reasons why I bought this X-T225. Uh, it's a 2007 model, and a lot of people would think that's a bit outdated, but for me, it had the specifications that I really wanted in a motorcycle. So, now, a year later, I want to look back at the last year and the last 5,000 miles and talk a little bit about how, how the bike has proven to be over that time. I guess if we were to go straight to the punchline, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but it's not the perfect motorcycle, but it's pretty much the perfect motorcycle for me and the things that I do. So let's hop on, we'll take a ride. I'll talk a little bit about the pros and cons to the bike and just exactly how I feel about it a year later. Firstly, it's definitely worth talking about last year's video for just a minute because I was just so amazed at the amount of comments and the great response that other XT225 owners had or other people considering dual sports. There's definitely a huge following for this bike out there and for all the reasons that have been discussed and so many people have ridden the motorcycle in stock form or they found it as a great base of a motorcycle to modify but above all they're looking for a simple small motorcycle and it's really not a segment that's that's addressed very much in today's market again for reasons that were covered in that video but how does in 2019 a 12 year old motorcycle fare well, it's pretty much what I thought it would be. I guess let's talk about power a little bit. I'm certainly not overwhelmed by the power, but I'm pleased with it. The six-speed transmission is definitely a great thing to have because first gear really crawls. You'll notice I shifted out of it really quickly right there, but on the trail, it's awesome. And sixth, sixth gear, I've been really surprised to find that it allows the bike to go 70 or if you're really pushing it 75 miles an hour now it's not super happy there not that it complains but th that's not where you want to ride this motorcycle I find that 60 miles an hour is really a pretty sweet spot for it with the stock gearing that the bike has so everything from just crawling around on a trail to sixth gear and 60 miles an hour the bike is just perfectly content. Yes, it can go faster, and I've made it go faster, and, and it does it, and I've done it on the interstate. And again, the bike will do it, but it's not where it's happiest. It's an awful lightweight motorcycle to be going that speed on the interstate. And you can read forums, and you can read opinions of people. There's all kind of things you can do on bikes that they aren't necessarily optimized to do but again crawling around on trails up to about 60 miles an hour this is great and they call it an old man's bike or a girl's bike but hey newsflash I'm 55 years old I guess I guess I qualify for the old man thing right now I would rather get through sections cleanly and get through trails cleanly and uh, not strain myself and live to fight another day even if it means going a little bit slower than trying to blast through sections or jump over things uh, so engine as far as suspension I would say it's really well matched to the bike there's almost nine inches there's 8.9 inches up front seven and a half in the rear it's not a lot but it's plenty if you're going lower speeds you'll notice in some of my uh, videos that I'm riding through rocky creek beds and it does just great in that but I'm also going at a slower speed I'm just kind of picking through it it's more like trials riding than it is enduro riding it's certainly not high speed riding and for that the bike has a great balance 
the light weight is definitely felt and appreciated there. But when you start pushing the bike, I have ridden it on pseudo motocross tracks. It just doesn't like air. Well, it's it's not the uh, it's not the air that gets you. It's the the sudden landing. It's that hitting the ground and feeling that metal on metal. The suspension bottoms really quickly for me at 160 pounds. And it's just obvious the bike's not made for that. And there are things you can do. I'm considering getting stiffer springs for the suspension. And I'll talk about modifications later. But with a bike that wasn't really made for that, if you beef up the suspension, do you need to beef up the, the wheels any? Are the wheels going to hold up? Once you start going faster, it affects the whole bike as a whole. And really, that, that brings to mind where I think Yamaha really succeeded here. They built an inexpensive bike, relatively inexpensive, lightweight, super fun, and all the parts are really well matched together. So, uh, the engine's not outstanding in any one area, I don't think. And the suspension certainly isn't, and uh, the braking certainly isn't, but it all works well together. The front disc brake works just fine. I can use two fingers on it. It slows me down just fine. It doesn't have any particular bite to it, but you pull it harder, it slows you down more. It's one of those things for the speeds the bike was designed to go. It's never disappointed me or let me down, but it's never impressed me. And the rear drum brake, I grew up as a kid riding drum brakes, so I'm kind of used to that. You don't have a lot of modulation there. It's kind of, kind of dead feeling, but again, you push the pedal harder, it slows you down more. It doesn't do anything wrong. I would say that. So the brakes work really well matched to the bike. Uh, I don't see myself needing to upgrade anything there because I'm suddenly going to start riding more aggressively or go faster. I'll mention that the tires were relatively new when I got the bike. They're the Shinko 244 Golden Boy Dual Sport tires. 50-50 tires and I've had them on a number of bikes. I really like these tires for the price point. They're around 50 bucks each and the front is cupping some but it's got another thousand or so miles in it. The rear tire is pretty shot and that's with 5,000 miles use on it. I think that a bike with this amount of horsepower relatively low amount of horsepower, just under 20 horsepower, I would say. Doesn't really chew through tires. So tires are gonna last longer on a bike like this, both the relatively low power output and the lightweight. And even things, just regular maintenance, like adjusting the chain. I've probably adjusted the chain three times, maybe, in 5,000 miles. It's a, I think it's a 428, uh, might be a 520. Nah, it's a 428. It's a it's an O-ring chain, so it's not the cheapest chain on the market. It's probably OEM, but it's decent. So realize that maintenance is going to be relatively low on a bike like this. Thinking of maintenance, what have I had to do? In addition to typical oil changes, I threw in a new spark plug just because. And that's really it. I haven't even been into the carburetor on this bike. Except for, I did have one bad experience. The bike has never stopped. It's never let me down. But it was using oil for a while. And it really concerned me, because it seemed rather sudden. And what happened was, I had, oh okay, I had taken the gas tank off. I had greased the joints in the swing arm and all that stuff and there wasn't a zerk fitting on the ends of the shock so I pulled the tank and the seat off and I greased those when I reassembled it apparently and this is a known potential problem I had pinched a breather hose that goes from the top end goes from the head the cam area 
to the air box and it my understanding is it lets uh, pressure blow off inside the head to help regulate the oil pressure correctly and what can happen and what did happen in this case I managed to put the tank back on and pinch the hose between the fuel petcock and the carburetor and so that breather hose got pinched it apparently builds up too much pressure in the head and that somehow causes the bike to use oil now whether it was a direct result of it or not I saw that when I pulled the valve covers off just to inspect them I saw that those o-rings were shot they were flattened out and there was oil leaking around the valve covers there and I'm attributing it to that uh, that breather hose being pinched but I've also heard people say it just happens regardless I got new o-rings button things back up I shortened that breather hose a little bit just so it would stay out of the way of that petcock carb uh, interference fit and no more oil usage it's running great just for the record I've been using mobile one in the bike motorcycle oil 10w40 just because I've run it in other bikes it's uh, full synthetic and I know people have varying opinions on what oil works best and how much they want to spend on oil and how often they should change it I went with the synthetic just because though you would think a small engine would put low demands on an oil you also do get this mill revving some when you're if, if you're riding with other riders and you're trying to keep up with them you are working it fairly hard and I just I have loved typically the way that that mobile has worked in other bikes and it's proven well here except when I had that little breather hose problem kind of as an aside thinking of riding on country roads I did go riding with some friends and I learned a lot riding with a group of three other guys and one of them was actually on a sport bike uh, after the ride he contacted me and asked me about what it was like to ride the dual sport with a pack of bigger bikes uh, WR250 uh, DRZ400 and then his CBR600 as we were doing these back roads and I told those guys you go ahead of me I'll stay in the back just because I knew they could accelerate a lot harder and I, I was able to keep up but I you have to work the bike awfully hard if you're gonna do that now we were far from racing around it's just when you're on the back of four people and somebody the front guy sometimes decides to accelerate hard out of a turn sometimes takes it easy and you don't know what's going up you don't know what's going on exactly or what's coming up you just kind of have to keep that the revs there on the bubble and you just have to be prepared for anything so you kind of have to work the bike harder than if you were the first rider or the second rider necessarily but the bike did an okay job of that but he was asking me how it kept up and if it was too small and I told him that really it kept up but it's not designed to ride with a pack of guys on bigger bikes uh, you can do it but if you get running hard or flowing you can make the bike go pretty darn quick but this pace right here man this is what it's about and this road is what it's about this is awesome but I also told him, he asked, well, what about as a dirt bike? How well does it work? And I think this thing works awesome as a dirt bike. I think, again, if you are picking your way around trails, if you're not worried about going fast, if you're more on the trials rider end than the GNCC rider end, it's a great bike for that. But if you're using it to ride to the trails, you probably have some kind of compromised tire like these 50-50 tires I've ridden this bike a hundred miles to get to a trail or to get to a bunch of gravel roads or things like that and the 50-50 tires work well on both of them but if you were considering getting this 
or a trail bike or getting a dedicated dirt bike that and hauling it to the to the trails on the dedicated dirt bike you could set the suspension up a bit stiffer you could definitely get some dedicated knobbies that are gonna work really great off-road and so it comes down to what I'm doing right now I love this I love riding on these side roads these secondary roads it's something I can do year-round it's something I can hop right out of my house and get to in 15 minutes if I had a dirt bike a dedicated dirt bike I might have more fun on the trails be able to do more feel like I can use my abilities even more just largely because of things like tires and setup but I would be missing out on all of this so I think this little stretch here really shows what makes having a dual sport like this so much fun you just ride the pavement until it runs out and you hit the gravel the sun is setting you go as fast as your skills will let you you see things that people on their sport bikes aren't gonna see that the Harley riders probably aren't gonna see. And for the most part on these roads, you're pretty much out here by yourself, most often. On this road, for instance, I will pass more side-by-sides and ATVs than I will automobiles, that's for sure. Yeah, I won't see anybody in just a, in just a regular old sedan out here that's for sure and you can decide to take a little side trip if you want go down some sketchy gravel there are these little trails that jut off different places Ooh, there's one I'll check out next time if things are posted though I definitely do not uh, do not bother uh, trespassing. No, I won't do that. It's awfully dry right now. Both the time of year and the fact that we've had an incredibly hot, dry summer. There's a little bit of water here. I'll slow down enough so that I don't soak my boots. I don't have my riding boots on. I've got my hiking boots on. And then I can take the road here or I can choose to just kind of go up the creek bed if I want to. And this illustrates just what I was talking about, about the XT being really kind of like more a trials bike. As far as picking your way through this stuff, you're not going to bomb through it. Although I am going a little quicker than I normally do. I guess that's because I know somebody's watching. <laughs> this, this is wild. If you go to the right here, it's super sandy. You just bury it. Once again, ask me how I know. You'll see the four-wheel folks out here. Oh, this stuff is just covered in leaves for the first time. And we'll climb out of it. Just using the low end. Just letting the bike lug up stuff. If I had a wish for the, for the engine, it would be that it had just a little bit more low end. That's just a displacement thing, though. It does really great for a 225. It, it would just... I really couldn't expect a whole lot more out of it. And where it doesn't have that massive grunt of a of a bigger engine, it um, has that nice wide spread of the gearing and that low first gear to make up for it. 
though I haven't had any failures on the bike, I do carry an extra clutch cable with me and zip ties and a tire patch kit. I've had a clutch cable break on me just twice or th two or three times in the 40 years I've been riding, but they'll let go without too much warning and it really is a pain if you're on the road to get home without a clutch cable. As far as modifications that have been done to the bike, there are very few. When I purchased it, it had the oversized pegs on it and it had the luggage rack. And then I put these aluminum bars on it. They're Turner bars. I'll put a link below. I forget where I bought them. I'll have to look it up. Uh, and really, I bought these particular aluminum bars because they, they looked good and they were at a budget price. I didn't overthink that, that's for sure. But these bars are so much stronger than the stock mild steel ones. And I've just been terribly disappointed laying bikes down and having stock handlebars just pretzel up. Then to the bars I added the Acherby's handguards. Went with the all plastic ones. They've proven good for me in the past on lighter bikes. I've never broken one, but they don't have the metal frames. If you want the all out strength, definitely get the metal frames, but these are good. Like I say, have been for me on the smaller bikes. The only thing is you really have to tighten them down or, or they, they could potentially slip, but they've been good. I've tested them a time or two. And then the last thing, the last mod, has been the turn signal beeper. If you can hear that, that I added my own creation. There's a video here on YouTube I made on how that was created. And really the reason I did that is because I was forgetting to turn off the turn signal. And if you ride with other people, you, you do see that. And the reason it bothered me though is specifically because of YouTube videos. I'd see after I'd film myself, before I had the buzzer, I'd go around a turn and then I'd be riding the bike or, and, and it would be on for a couple miles, or I'd be on a trail in the middle of nowhere with no one around and I'm signaling that I'm gonna turn. So with this little beeper, that keeps me honest and that doesn't happen. What a pretty little area and an awesome turn. And that's about it for another dual sport ride here in the Midwest. The sun is setting. We managed to get in another total of 80 miles or so tonight after work. That's when I love to ride the most. Love to catch those sunsets. And uh, I was just thinking about one more thing on the bike. Before I finished, I wanted to talk about the fit of the motorcycle and just the size of it. Me being 5'5", around 160 pounds, with about a 28-inch inseam, I absolutely love being able to touch the ground on the bike no matter where I go, no matter what I do. Um, it, my very first impression when I hopped on it after the DR350 Suzuki was that it was just really small. I know people have kind of referred to it as like a 7 8 scale bike or something. And it felt more like a 3 quarter bike to me. It's just a little bit smaller in every respect. And um, you know, it, it wasn't outrageously tiny, but to be honest, it felt a little cramped to me when I first got on it. Uh, just mainly in the in the arm chest area the DR was spread out a bit more there was a little bit further reach and for the record though I'm short I have short legs and my arms are just a little bit longer so I'm a little bit longer in the torso and at first I kind of liked the bigger feel of the bigger bike well now I don't even recall what that felt like this just feels 
so natural and so good to me in all respects. So in all dimensions, I've just certainly really adapted to this bike and it, it feels really good. And I've heard everything from people being shorter or people six foot four that like the way the bike feels. So that's such a personal thing. And there are things we can do with handlebars and foot pegs to tailor the bikes a, l a little bit more to ourselves. But and for me, at this stage of my life, I'm having way more fun riding something this size than something really big. And that's what it's all about. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I sure appreciate you riding along. And um, I hope to see you on the road sometime. Feel free to leave a comment, share your experience with your XT225, and ride safe.